Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and in this video, I'm going to finish our series on Affinity Publisher and how you can use it to create printed material for your photographic business or project. In previous videos, we've shown how to make a business card, letterhead and compliment slips, a banner for your website and an email signature. We've used the same building box and branding to create an exhibition poster and a leaflet describing our business. We'll finish with something which could actually earn some money, an ebook. In fact, this could be either an ebook or a regular printed book, or both. The document we create in Affinity Publisher could be sold via your website, used as a promotional giveaway, or as training material if you teach photographic courses. But you can also send it to a commercial printer for regular printing. You just need to get proper print and sizing specifications from them first. Be aware too that book printing is an expensive business that takes a good deal of cash upfront for uncertain returns. That's why ebooks are so popular. Creating a book in Affinity Publisher is no more difficult than creating some of the documents in our earlier videos. Publisher is perfect for long form content like books and also has all the tools you need for contemporary and inspiring covers. We'll introduce two final ideas in this tutorial. One is text auto flow and the other is text styles. So far in this series, we've been putting text in individual cell contained text frames, but in a book, the text runs on from one page to the next, and you want it to reflow automatically if you make any text changes. This is easy to do and we'll show you how. The idea of text styles is important too. You may use them already in word processing documents, but they're even more useful in professional publications where text styles can dramatically speed up text formatting and also give the consistency of appearance that professional publications need. So let's start right from the beginning by creating a new document. We have to choose the size, so let's go for A5. The actual dimensions you need will depend on your printer or on the devices you want your ebook to be displayed on, but we have to start somewhere and A5 is a good generic choice. First though, there's one thing to explain. The publisher file menu has a book option. We don't want that. Books in publisher are not themselves documents, but a tool for organizing other documents into a larger publication. This is a bit more advanced and not really necessary for our simple example. Now, in the new document panel, there are some more things to check. There is an A5 option near the top of the list, but we need the pages to be in a vertical format. So click the vertical orientation button at the top if it isn't selected already. In the first layout tab, check the image placement menu and decide if you want the prefer embedded or prefer linked option. Having separate linked files might seem messier, but it can be a lot more efficient in the long run. Next, in the Pages tab, make sure the Facing Pages box is checked. This is a key part of any bound publication, where you get left and right facing pages, which are like mirror images of each other in design terms, and do need to be visualized together just as readers would see them. We don't need to worry about the color, margin and bleed tabs right now, so let's go ahead and hit the Create button. So here's our blank book layout. There's nothing to see at the moment because we haven't added any content. But before we do that, there's some regular page furniture that we need to think about, such as the page number in particular, the book title, and maybe the chapter title. The logical place for all this is on the master page because then it will appear automatically on every page in the book instead of us having to do it manually. So we double click on the master page to edit it you'll see that this is not just one single page, but paired left and right pages. That's how master pages work in documents with facing pages. There are already margin guides based on the default margin settings for new documents, and we can use this area for our imported text later. For now though, let's think about the header and footer information. For this, let's create a new text frame at the bottom for the page number. We can then use the text insert fields and page number command to insert a special character which will automatically display page numbers in our document. We also want page numbers on the right side so we can alt or option drag this text frame to make a copy and drag this over to an equivalent position on the right page in our master page. 
because the right page is like a kind of mirror image of the left page, we need to set the text to be right aligned using the buttons on the top toolbar. What about the book title? Let's add another text frame below the main text area and enter a title. We're going to use some content from our earlier Affinity Photo tutorials. So let's call our book Affinity Photo Training for Beginners. This time we'll make sure the text is right aligned to line up with the right side of the page. We can then Alt or Option drag this frame to duplicate it for the right page. But this time we'll insert the author name and align it left. So let's go back to our document to see what it looks like. We have just a single right hand page at the moment because facing page documents almost always start on a right. But we do have a page number and some footer text already inserted. Now we just need some actual book text. For this we can start by dragging out a new text frame to match the main margin guides then use the file place command to locate a text file we prepared earlier. Publisher can import plain text files, RTF format files and Microsoft Word documents. And here's the imported text. It was supplied originally for printing in Amateur Photographer, so there are some notes and headings to strip out. But what you can see straight away is that there's too much text for the box. There's overflow. The text is still there, but not yet visible. Never fear. Take a look at the right hand edge of the text frame and you'll see a small red arrow and eye icon a little way up from the bottom right corner. Clicking the eye icon will show the overflowing text to give you an idea of how much there is, but it doesn't help us much here. Moving the mouse pointer over the tiny arrow icon changes the pointer to a chain icon to show that we're effectively loading up the cursor with the overflowing text, ready to click a new text frame so that the text continues in a new linked frame. That's kind of what we want, but what we really need is for Publisher to automatically create as many new pages and linked text frames as we need. So to do this, we hold down the shift key while clicking the link arrow icon. And in moments, Affinity Publisher has added enough pages and linked text frames to hold all the text. Perfect. But the text isn't yet in the style that we've used for our other business documents and publications. This is why designers use style sheets, which consist of font, size and paragraph attributes. You can also create character styles for individual words and characters, but we don't need that right now. First, we need to assign a style to all our words. So let's carry out a select all command on the text, then go up to the top toolbar, open a paragraph style drop down, and choose the predefined body style. It still doesn't use our preferred font and size yet, but at least now the text has been assigned a defined style. So now, with all the text still selected, we can use the menus on the top toolbar to select the Avenir Next font we've been using in all our other documents, and we can set the size to 10 point, which looks about right here. This means we've overridden the existing body style, and we'll lose our changes if we apply that style again. What we actually need to do is redefine that body style with our alterations, and that's easy. There's an update paragraph style button just to the right of the paragraph style drop down and one click updates the existing body style with our new fonts and size settings. You can use the same technique for chapter headings and subheadings within your book. First select the text, then choose a pre-existing paragraph style from the list such as heading 1 or heading 2. Then choose the font and or the size you actually want and update the style. You can now use these styles throughout the book. You won't have to do any manual formatting and they will be consistent throughout. And if you do decide to modify a style, all the instances of that style will be updated automatically. We can even use our new body style on the master page to make the page number, book title and author text frames consistent with our book's body copy. So now we've gone through this chapter, applying text styles and removing unwanted labels or returns between paragraphs and it's all looking neat and tidy. Except, what if we want to add an image to the opening page and make the main text start on the following page? All these text frames are linked, so how do we do that? This is easy to do using a special break character. We can place the insertion point directly before the first word of the main text and then use the text insert breaks page command. 
This forces the text to start on the next page, leaving plenty of room on the opening page for us to add a picture frame and place an image. We're not going to add any more chapters to our document to create a whole book because that would take an age and would simply mean repeating the same steps over and over. Instead, let's think about the cover. Obviously, we need to add some pages before the first chapter, and that's easy. The page panel has an Add Pages button. This opens up a simple looking dialog that does have a couple of important settings. First, we need to choose the number of pages, which we'll set to four. This needs to be an even number for our book so that it still starts on the right page. We can use the blank pages after the cover for some publishing preamble and any statutory information for printed volumes. Then we need to choose where the pages are inserted. In this case it needs to be before page 1, otherwise the new pages will appear in the middle of our flowing text frames and confuse everything. So now with our new pages added we can create a cover for our first page. Remember, this is always a right page. Rather than going through every step of our cover design, we'll simply copy elements from our earlier poster and leaflet designs. If you want to know more about how to create and modify artistic text frames, picture frames and shapes, check out those videos. And here's our book cover and the pages to our book so far. Hopefully, you can see that once you've worked out the basics of master pages, styles on the page panel, creating whole books can be remarkably straightforward. So that's the last in this short series of Affinity Publisher tutorials. We've covered a lot of ground, but we've taken it one step at a time so that even publishing beginners can see how to create their own publications. We hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.